Hi honeys, today I have a really special treat for you. I'm showing you one of my personally designed spreads that I use for my clients and that I devised quite some time ago to try and help people to get a more clear sense of um, the gods and goddesses that they may wish to work with, the energies or specific kinds of deity that they may be drawing into their life at the moment or that they may need to seek guidance from or that may potentially have messages for them. I know this is something that a lot of people are actually kind of attempting to work out and at any point on the journey in paganism and witchcraft and alternative spirituality you are bound to meet loads of people who are kind of um, feeling as though a deity is on the sidelines and they're not quite sure how to make contact, feeling like there is a message but not really sure which deity is speaking, uh, not really sure where to look, that kind of stuff, or particularly not sure which gods and goddesses would really fit with the core personality of the seeker. So this is a really useful spread for that kind of issue. I am using the John Holland Psychic Tarot Oracle to give you the example spread. That is because it was literally the first deck that was to my hand that was near me when I decided to film this. You can of course use a standard tarot deck, you can also use runes or other kinds of oracle stones um, if you want to. I personally feel that this kind of spread is suited particularly to oracle cards. That's just my personal feeling, my personal flavour, and you may not necessarily agree with me. But that's something that I want to put out there. So this spread is um, not just for people looking to find a matron and patron, you know, in that very kind of Wiccan-esque structure where you're looking for a male and female godhead, um, which are kind of, uh, kind of come together as a pair, if you will. Um, this spread is also very useful for people who already have a matron and patron or a matron or patron and are just kind of wondering if messages are coming through from any other deities or kind of feel as though it's time to invite a new deity into the mix. This is a good spread for anybody who already has a matron and wants to seek a patron or vice versa and is wondering what kind of energies to go for, whereabouts to begin the research, whereabouts to start looking um, or what kinds of gods and goddesses it would be prudent to call upon. Um, quite often this spread is really just about checking in with the core personality of the Quirin at this, at this time in their journey um, as they're kind of seeking a connection with god or goddess and actually what normally comes up in the messages are basically themes and energies, um, insights to help a seeker to understand what kinds of deities could hold messages or what kinds of gods and goddesses would be prudent to work with, fruitful to work with, beneficial to work with at this time. Um, you can very well use this spread to um, find out what you to do, you know make a connection with with a matron and patron, and I have used it for clients for that many times. But there are obviously other ways in which you can use it. Um, you can also use it for things like connecting spirit guides um, and that kind of stuff. So it does kind of work outside of of the um, the parameters that I'm going to show you. But essentially, what I'm going to do is just show you the breakdown of the spread from the perspective of somebody who is just basically um, looking into gods and goddesses that it would be prudent to work with. So let's imagine that you're a seeker and you're not necessarily looking for a matron and patron kind of um, as that hard line idea, but you are kind of looking for gods and or goddesses, just kind of considering what kinds of energies, what kind of, kind of vibes and themes and pantheons it would be prudent to work with and seeing what the cards have in the way of messages for you there. Another thing I want to stress before I break down this spread and what each of the card meanings are is that when I'm doing this spread for a client I very very rarely actually mention names of specific gods and goddesses that the client should work with however sometimes I am intuitively drawn to give specific names and at those times I will give specific names. But I will never say, for example, if I have an intuitive calling that I need to mention Isis to the client, for example, I will never say, you know, Isis is your matron or you need to begin to work with Isis. I will always say something like, um, you know, I feel intuitively called to say that perhaps you ought to research Isis. And that is because, first of all, my knowledge is not, um, you know, it's not all encompassing. I don't know every single god and goddess from every single pantheon and every single civilization and so on and so forth. So I'm limited by my own knowledge base and I'm limited by the amount of understanding that I have of the pantheons that I have an understanding of. So obviously my consciousness is going to kind of grasp onto god goddesses and gods that fit the themes that I see in the cards, but that I already know. There's very much a possibility that when the seeker goes off and begins their own research in accordance with the themes and energies that I've conveyed, they may find other gods and goddesses that I don't even know of, you know, and they might come across pantheons that I really don't have much idea of, and that might be what fits for them. 
So quite often, if I do have a very strong intuitive calling to say, you know, like, I really think you need to look into Saraswati, or I really think you need to look into Hecate or Dionysus, then of course I will, I will mention that, but it will always be as a suggestion and it will always be as part of a more all encompassing theme or energy. It's very important for me to make sure that the, the seeker goes off and does their own explorations because of course, you know, as I mentioned, my knowledge is limited. I don't know every god and goddess out there and it's really important for the seeker to make their own way and make their own discoveries. That's the, the joy and the beauty of it. So most of the time I'm just going to basically be giving a seeker a sense of the themes, a sense of the energies and potentially of specific pantheons where they could be looking and starting their research, places where it might be prudent for them to do that at this point on their journey, you know, specific themes and energies that seem to be aligning with their core personality and that they might want to check out and consider. So without further ado, now that I've laid that out, I will show you, I'll let you know what the um, what these spread positions are and feel free to write them down and take some notes and try this spread if it's something that's going to be useful for you. So the top two cards have kind of a dual role. Sometimes I use the top two cards, positions one and two, as the core and the obstacle. So the core card, or the snapshot card as I quite often also call it, will basically be just checking in with what the needs are right now and where you are at this point on your journey. So let's imagine that you're the seeker. So it's basically just aligning itself with your current energy, what you might currently need, how you currently feel about connecting with deity and so on and so forth. And then the obstacle card will basically spell out or look into any potential difficulties that you may be having with connecting or aligning with deity or anything like that. If I don't necessarily feel that the seeker has any specific obstacles or any challenges, if that's not conveyed in the notes, for example, then I will simply use these two cards instead as um, important considerations. So basically they form a dual starting point for the reading. Just basically any important considerations, anything that it's important to consider first before the search for deity kind of commences, then those will be the messages that will come through in those, um, in those initial two cards. Obviously, when you use the first two cards as just important considerations, then you might find that um, there is very much, first of all, an energy of the now and then an energy of what's kind of blocking or challenging. But you could also find that any number of things come up for you intuitively using those positions. These three cards make up the most important part of the spread because this is where we get into the specific themes and energies and potential pantheons and types of deities that could be very prudent for the seeker to call upon. So when you're looking at these three cards, if you're doing the reading for yourself, what you're really looking at are the key themes, the key types of energies, the types of gods and goddesses, gods and or goddesses that are coming through. So let's do some examples. Obviously, with this specific spread, we have fertility as uh, the second card. So for me, the fertility card would obviously be about like very strong mother goddesses. That's a really obvious one that you would want to think about. Um, obviously, there's that green heart chakra glowing there. And so I might also consider potentially love goddesses um, and things, things of that nature. But essentially, with fertility, I think we're looking at obviously goddesses of fertility and also obviously strong mother archetype goddesses. Of course, as I said, you can use your intuition to really tap into any specific pantheons that the card might be calling you towards. If you get some deep insights when you turn the card over and you think, I really think that that connects with a specific kind of pantheon, then definitely consider that, take that under advisement, because that's really coming from, you know, this deeply intuitive place. And that's the kind of thing that it's really cool to take note of. You might also notice, again, when you turn over the card, immediately specific names of goddesses coming to mind, like specific mother goddesses that have kind of been in your aura or in your consciousness for a while. Equally, you may wish to go and do some research. Essentially, these three cards really urge you towards research and towards opening up the portals and the avenues that you might not have considered before. These cards ask you to go away and look at specific things. I always use my intuition to determine where to send a seeker who's interested in matching up with deities that align with their energy. So I'll look at the cards and then I will decide as the result of looking at the cards where I think it would be prudent to advise a seeker to begin their research and their searching and their communing and their opening up the channels, you know, to deities that might be useful for them.
Destiny immediately with this card I would obviously think about goddesses, particularly goddesses of fate. Um, I, I actually, when I look at this, I think of the Nordir or the Norns, um, the Norse goddesses of fate that actually weave the web of the Yggdrasil. And there are in the Celtic tradition the same kinds of, of goddesses, these goddesses that kind of like weave the fate of man and stuff like that. So I would definitely um, potentially advise a client to take a look at those kinds of things um, if this came up in this kind of position. Discontent and boredom reversed. Uh, this could definitely be like a party god. When I'm doing a god and goddess reading quite often I tend to think of the presence of men in these positions as a suggestion for gods and the presence of women as the suggestions for goddesses. That's kind of how it goes with me. Discontent and boredom reversed I would say probably a party god, a god that seems to having a good time, maybe a trickster god, a god that you're not going to be bored with, <laughs> you know, so I would be thinking about trickster gods and gods of wine and gods of partying and, you know, gods of ecstasy and all that kind of good stuff. These are just examples and it's really important to allow your intuition to take you where it wants you to go. You've really got to um, open up the third eye. In fact, my advice if you're doing this for yourself and you're really hoping that the cards are going to provide messages for you, which are going to kind of um, take you towards where you're supposed to be with regard to which deities to focus on, is first of all to draw out sacred space if that is something that you do. Um, doing this kind of reading in sacred space definitely gives it a punch, definitely gives it a big kick and allows you to make sure that the energies that you want to surround yourself with are as potent as they can be and any energies that you want gone are gone so you're basically taking control um, of the energies that are around you and heightening your vibration and your kind of emotional well-being in the process the other thing I might potentially advise is to work on a third eye chakra activation before doing this kind of spread and then that really kind of um, tunes you in with your intuition and kind of lets those deeper insights come forward where they need to come forward the next two cards down below here in the left hand side offer advice on deciphering messages and where to look for clues. Um, obviously um, deity and those kinds of higher energies however you consider them and however you think of them quite often don't speak to you in plain English right um, they actually kind of speak to you in signs and symbols and stuff like that and quite often people come to a spread such as this and request a reading such as this because they actually feel like a deity is trying to come in and energy is attempting to present itself um, for connection but actually there there are you, there's kind of the intuition is misfired okay so quite often a client will come to me saying that they kind of feel like there's this new energy of deity kind of in the sidelines kind of lurking in the eaves if you will but they're really not sure how to help it to come forward and they want to understand if there are any messages forthcoming so quite often these two cards will speak to that um, so I would basically say, for example, choose wisely reverse. That could be potentially, just for an example, um, a message that a, um, a, a really difficult decision that it's very tough for the seeker to make, that the seeker has been kind of stagnating on, is actually kind of going to be helped by the presence of this specific deity. And actually the deity is attempting to come through and help them with that specific decision. Um, temptation could potentially be, for example, um, a difficulty with um, trying to avoid temptation to do something that the querent knows is morally objectionable or that the querent feels is in some sense not appropriate and maybe they're battling with their shadow and maybe that battle with the shadow is actually a sign that the deity kind of wants to come in and actually if, if when they're doing that battle with shadow they actually open up and listen for communication the deity will be there. These cards um, quite often kind of give you places to look for clues, you know, and those could be places within your psyche or those could be external places. You might need to go to a specific location to actually open up the channel for deity and kind of get that clear channel, you know, get that clearer kind of phone connection as it were. Sometimes these cards can represent areas in your life where certain things are going on. Um, and certain areas where potentially you might be kind of hearing strong intuitive messages and not realising that those messages are actually a call from deity or from spirit or from some kind of higher energy. 
So these cards can be very interesting and quite often when you draw these cards they can often confirm suspicions that you already had and they can kind of draw your eye, as it were, to parts of your life where you've kind of already felt like something is on the sidelines or you've kind of already felt like, yes, this is a key reason that I'm calling deity into my life and actually it can clarify a lot of things. These two cards help you with forming meaningful communion. There are many different ways to open up the channel to deity. Um, sometimes it's with regard to ritual, sometimes it's about making an offering, sometimes it's about physically decluttering or emotionally decluttering so that the, the energetic force of the new deity has room to come in and introduce itself to you and absorb itself into your life and your consciousness. There are many different ways to connect up with deity and there are quite a few different reasons why you might be misfiring and feeling unable to connect with that, um, that force of deity that is somewhere in the eaves of your life, in the sidelines of your life, but you're struggling to actually allow it to come through. So dependent upon your situation, these two cards can be really, really illuminating. They can just basically give you some ideas of different ways that you might be able to invite deity into your life or pick up on the signals or otherwise get a strong communi communion with deity, that strong connection that you're really looking for. A lot of the time people say that they're really not sure whether or not they're communicating properly, they don't feel like it's strong enough, they kind of feel like they want it to come through on a higher or more kind of defined or profound level, they're not sure how to do that. So sometimes it's just about getting the ideas factory working and thinking about things that you might not have thought of before. And sometimes this card, these cards can really just give you a strong sense of something that you're not doing that you can be doing. Patience reversed in the Psychic Tarot Oracle, if I actually turn it the right way up, there's a really, really strong piece of shamanic imagery here, with the seed kind of sprouting up into life and becoming a glorious lily, and then you've got that kind of incense smoke moving off in this direction, and there's a lot of deep concentration and also ceremonial dress, so I would say that the possibility of this card being connected to the importance of the act of ceremony and ritual would be quite high, and that's something that I might suggest to a seeker if this came up. I would also suggest, since obviously the name of the card is Patience and the card is reversed, that potentially the seeker, if this card came up in this position, might be pushing too hard for answers and might just be pushing a little bit too hard for connection and communion. And actually they need to relax, you know, it's quite often like it is with a lot of things in life where as soon as you stop trying overtly, you get the result that you want. Whereas when you're trying and trying and trying, you're probably in resistance and you're stressing yourself out and you're probably misfiring and missing the signs from deity. So if patience was reversed in this situation, I'd be quite inclined to tell a seeker to back off, just relax and stop trying to make things happen. And it will be at that point that things will start to happen. Foundation and achievements reverse could be quite interesting. Um, again, just looking at the image rather than looking at the title, I might be inclined to advise a seeker to go outside and try and cultivate meaningful communion with um, deities outside of the home. You know, the fact that this is reversed and there's obviously a homestead there might represent that the seeker needs to actually leave their environment and go and change up their vibration somewhere out in nature, somewhere in another location where they can really get that clear signal. So that might be one thing that I would kind of um, I would kind of take from that card and use. The reason that I've given you examples um, of li like different things that I would potentially say to a querent is that sometimes I worry that my spreads may be a little abstract and I want to show you what's possible with them. And as you can probably tell, quite a lot is possible when you're using oracle card decks because you've really got that strong pictorial thing and it's kind of a little bit more open to interpretation. Not that tarot isn't open to interpretation because it is to a certain point, um, but sometimes I think there's just more of that sense of openness and more of that sense of invitation to potent imagination when you're doing this kind of spread if you're using oracle card decks. However, it's completely horses for courses, strokes for folks. It's really important for you to use what feels right and what feels good for you. And I really, really hope that this spread has been useful for those of you who have been on the lookout for something to help you to kind of connect with uh, the kinds of deities that you could be working with and potentially also specific deities that might be calling to you and you know use it and let me know how it goes and um you know leave a comment below if you if you did use it and it was of use to you much love guys blessed be if you're interested in getting a God and Goddess reading with me to see what comes up when I interpret the cards and use this spread, then pop over onto the Etsy shop and have a look at the God and Goddess reading option. I'm going to link it below for you guys to check out.